Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And yes, I might sound quite sullen and underspoken at the moment, but we're here to just bask in the greatness that is the 780T. This is the latest Corsair graphite case, and it technically is the replacement for the aging now 600T, uh, but I still think that's a very good looking case. Now this is obviously the newer, more modern kind of uh, look to it. The 600T was obviously quite rounded. This has um, got some quite angular parts on it, which kind of does really follow the, the kind of the um, assets or the aspects of the uh, like uh, modern looking car. They're, start, they're starting to get quite um, angular in their design and uh, manufacturer again. And I think this kind of does follow suit. So it does have a very modern feel. Now the reason why you've not seen me yet is I'm actually just going to move the camera around and move the um, the case around so that we can get a decent look at uh, some of the parts um, and you know certain angles about it before we break into the fully fledged uh, reviewing side of it. Now some of the angles and the views on this case are actually quite striking and I think that's one of the reasons why it's uh, grown on me um, is I really wasn't expecting it to have all these kind of quite they look a lot more curved in the photos than they are in real life let's put it that way if we move like the camera around you can see there is that kind of straight edged modern look to a lot of it rather than the overly curved nature of everything else just these little lines and everything around here, you know, the straight edge there going up into it. It's all pretty much straight lines, but with kind of like beveled in. And I personally really like the look of this. It's the same when we get round to the back kind of area as well. If we move the camera up. There's a lot of angles and lines and design gone into this. But you're going to get to see all this as we work our way around anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do what we always do. We're going to start at the front and at the top and we'll work our way around before we get into um, hardware on the inside so that we can see about sizing and stuff, water cooling compatibility. Then we can also, um, yeah, there's a lot to cover. So get comfy, get your big cup out, go and get some uh, cookies or some biscuits or your dinner, whatever you guys want to do. And let's get this baby covered. Right, so, top front, as always, nice clicky start button there. Hang on, if I get me... You're obviously not gonna press it an awful lot. There's a fan controller up here, three setting, so basically low, medium, and then high. You've got your microphone and your headphone, two USB 2s, two USB 3s, and then a reset switch over in the uh, top corner. This top section, you can press at the front to release, but we will cover this in more depth in a moment. We're going to stick with the front for now before we actually start talking about the roof and stuff coming off. If I slide the camera down, essentially up here you can see this is where your, your power light is and we have two optical bays. They're still there for those of you out there that still use a CD drive, um, but more importantly than not, you could have uh, other optical base size components in here. You might have a dual screen. There's a lot of screens coming out at the moment. You could have a fan controller that's in there, or you could end up using this for a dual bay reservoir for your water cooling. Now, if I move the camera back and we slide down, we get the, uh, the glimpse of the front panel. Now, the front panel, is a clip release as we're used to with a lot of the Corsair um, cases. If we flip it round you can see that there is some um, fine mesh dust filtering in there. So we've got that. You can see the brace behind. Now when we remove it it does expose two 140 millimeter fans in the front but this is really when things start to get complicated because but then if we take the fans out, we get left with a plethora of options. I mean, if you look around all of these different mounts that you can screw in, the 
ones with the threads are the ones that we've taken out now, that's the 140s. But there are then uh, radiator mounts that you can get in here. And we will cover radiator mounts uh, and stuff when we get on the inside. But you can put 320 millimeter fans on the front there. So yes, that does mean there is room for 360 mil rad in the front. But we need to go inside and check kind of end tank sizes and which way we have to do it. But with those fans out, and like I said, you can see that there's a plethora of uh, extra options there. Right then, so moving round to the rear section, we've got a uh, large mesh area at the top here, which a lot of people can find kind of uh, confusing why it's here, but it can help the uh, air kind of radiate its way outwards. Now, if we have a look at the fan, I have uh, loosened these screws off just so that you're aware, but there's mounts here for 120 millimeter and the fitted 140 millimeter fan. We have these little uh, sliders so that you can slide the fan up and down and have it uh, where you want it placed. The reason why you can move it up and down depending on where you want it is so that if you want to drop the fan down a little bit so that you can run a bigger radiator in the roof, that's your option with this. Or you can just put it up as high as you like. You know, options are not a bad thing. When we look slightly down, and we get down here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine expansion slots, and then your dual mount um, power supply. And by the way, when I say dual mount, it's so that you can mount it either way around. That again is kind of normal now. When we take a look at the bottom, you can see that we've got the uh, large feet, and these have got some big rubber pads on this size. This is very uh, 600T-esque. Now, when you actually get hold of them, these, even though they've got the braces, they can be flexed a little bit. Um, but obviously when the weight of the case is on them, they're not designed to be twisted the way I am with my hands. They're just designed to support the weight, which and then is put straight up into the actual main metal chassis. And it does that perfectly well. They don't flex that way as much as they do this way. But again, it's a bit like carbon fiber uh, um, swing arms on uh, Formula One cars, if you stand on one of those, it will just snap, but you know, it's designed for that specific thing. We have got the removable dust filters in the bottom, which is a lovely touch, so it's full length as well. Very easy to remove at the front and the back for cleaning. And if I just buzz it out quick, you can see it's actually quite a good dust filter in there as well and I do like the fact it's dual colour black one side and then white the other so it's not so noticeable on the inside that is a very you know small touch there but obviously from this side it looks white but when you look from the inside through all the mesh rather than having all the white stuff showing through and making it look funny that's a very very nice touch that I've only just seen myself I really like that okay so round to the uh, rear section and the first time that we've come across the doors. There is a, a latch at the top and you can see it releases out. And there you have it. It's actually very much a curved, uh, very much a curved door. It's a curved door as well. It's not a flat object at all. You can see the curve there. Not so much at the bottom. I would say that the, uh, the, the latches along the bottom down here it's going to take some getting used to to keep getting them in and I have found that I do need to push the top a little bit to get it in it's not a door that you can or at that time you could maybe I'm just getting used to fitting it more but anyway so we will remove the rear panel and then when we get around to the uh, the back section Tom reaches for his trusty tape measure and this is actually quite a complicated one so the, the bottom half of this case down here is not the, the type of thing that I'm actually really, it's, you're not going to see this very often. Well, unless Corsair start doing it, but rear room is a good 30 millimeters. But what I need to do, just to try and show you what I'm talking about, I need to rejig the camera. So I'm just going to stop filming and we'll come back. Right, so the bottom of the case, I'm not sure whether you're going to be able to see, but this angle, it actually tapers up. If you have a look at the white, as it works its way up, and get smaller so at the bottom we're looking at about 25 mil of that white plastic as we slide the tape measure up it goes up to about 15 millimeters so there's a 10 millimeter taper here and if we put the camera around on an even acuter angle 
you can see that it also comes out from the bottom as well. So when we uh, have a look down on the inside, in fact I'll show you from the inside just so you can see, hopefully you'll be able to get a better idea of what I'm trying to explain to you. Right, this was actually the best way I could find of showing you. But this is where your cables go through, but then it tapered inwards. So it goes down towards the back here. So there's obviously not much room right at the very bottom, but we've got a good 30 millimetres of room up here. So it actually will uh, uh, make your cables try and come up quite tighter against uh, the motherboard tray. If you have got a lot of cables though, this is a flat edge here pointing inwards. I do think that this uh, edge here should have been rolled more. It probably would have given a little bit more strength, although it doesn't particularly need it. But that uh, area, if you were to wedge all your cables up through, you could damage braid and things like that. It's not sharp enough that it's causing a problem. It's just a minor thing that I think, it, even if it was just this in, you know, this end section, I think it should have been rolled just so that we didn't have any uh, beginners having any issues with cabling and stuff. Also, it would be a lot easier when you're trying to poke cables through from the, uh, the inside, as it would come up, this wouldn't act like a stop point and a, like a, a catching area and it would actually help you be able to feed your cables up a little bit better. But if we come back here so we can get a better look, yes I have turned more lights on. Uh, if you have a look at the top, the top is very similar. You can see that there's a taper coming through from the back here and there's a, a really large area. I mean we're looking, it's 25 millimetres at the top to the outside of this. Um, that's uh, just a little bit bigger than the area at the bottom. The 25 mil room for the top section of your case is an immense amount. Right, so also what we can see on the rear section is we've got three uh, 2.5 mounts. We'll say solid state drive mounts, but we, you know, you can obviously can get uh, 2.5 uh, mechanicals as well. We've got a lot of uh, grommets, one, two, three, four, there's five, there's another one down there, and then there is one up in this top right hand corner as well, so that you can get your uh, eight pin cable through. There's some, uh, a couple of little of access holes, which I do just want to try and show you. There's a couple of little access holes up here, so that you can, as you're poking your cables through, you can actually get in there and um, access things a little bit better. Same at this end, although this end is very hard for me to show you. The camera should just about pick it up. You can see the, the cables here. Again, it's just to aid you being able to move things around. I actually really like that. If we uh, if I pull these cables up through as well, you do have a lot of fan cables and stuff. I'm just going to uh, reset the camera. Okay then, so... We've got one, two, three, four, five fan connectors. They, uh, they will fit a four pin in, but the fourth pin is missing. So they're three pin fan connectors, but thankfully we've got the full four. So if you do have uh, PWM fans, they will still go in there fine, rather than you having to cut them like I always ended up seeing to have to do. There's also a couple of power connectors. You've got uh, the Molex connector there. That's probably your 12 volt. We've also got the uh, SATA connector here as well. The other connectors are for your motherboard, um, your internal PC, PCR Express, I need to go back to school, internal USB 3, USB 2 and then your audio cables should you want to use them for the front panel. But I think really now it's time for us to get and have a dirty look at the other side. I'm just going to shove these cables down here so then I can uh, show you what I meant earlier on on the other side. Okay then, so this side you can obviously see that that is a very reflective and clear, well I say clear, window, but it's actually ever so slightly smoked. But it is very, very reflective. You can see when we spin it round to the other side, it's the normal uh, latch, but the, the plastic itself is like a, um, uh, it's not just a normal panel. It's actually been formed, it's got a lot of shape to it and I actually really like these windows a lot more because they fit in the corners and everything so much better. They have much better lines. The word I was looking for before was they almost look cast. I'm not quite sure how they're doing but I think it's a, like a cast panel. 
it's actually quite thick as well it's a really nice touch again we have the same mounting as the previous side all on there lovely it's actually a really nice door mechanism i really like that if we uh, move the camera in just quickly because i do want to show you the cables in the bottom essentially you can see here that we've not got a lot of room between the the edge and the the where the back panel comes up at an angle but as it comes up my finger disappears so it's on an angle there and you, again that is the same on this side also something that i was trying to explain to you earlier on in the bottom i said to you about the uh, the grills were black well if we were to pull them out now I don't think it will, they'll go in upside down, but obviously you can see white and black. There's a lot of difference between the two colours. So the fact that Corsair felt the need to go that in depth with their dust filtering, I think is a testament to the thought process behind making this case. Now you might wonder why I'm moving everything again, but I'm trying to uh, get you here for the hard drive cages. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six hard drive cages. They're tool free. That's all easy, easy. Then uh, you can fit 3.5 inch mechanicals in there. You can also fit solid state drives in there as well. But these are removable. All we need to do is undo a couple little screws. Okay, so I've removed two screws from here. I took the two front screws out when I was already round there. Now you can separate these cages, so you can just remove the top one, but just for the ease of the, the video and the film, we've removed the whole cage. Now what you can do is you can also remove this plastic mount by accessing screws in the lower section. And I'm just gonna take this out now, just so that it's out for stuff when we uh, cover other points later on in the video. Okay, so a look from a slightly different angle, and we can see the motherboard cutout area here. And you can see that we have uh, a lot of room between the top of the motherboard and the uh, top of the case. By a lot of room, I'm talking that to go to the top of the motherboard so you wouldn't have to worry about um, uh, heat sinks or anything like that, there is a solid 95 millimeters of room. And that is a hell of a lot, really. That would mean that you could easily with clearance get an 80 mil thick monster radiator at the top there now you can also see that the the grommets are above the uh, motherboard area in a nice way especially on this side as well there's oh, there's a fly flying around i got it i got the fly right so we've got the uh the um uh 95 mil of room at the top but there's also room above which is the next thing that I want to show you about the roof. Okay, so moving on to the roof section, as I showed you before, you can just pop it all out and it all slides open like that. And then you can see that we have mounts there for um, a 280 millimeter radiator and a 360 millimeter radiator. We will cover the, um, the radiator options in greater depth but the point that i wanted to bring you up here to show you was the fact that we can put a, a fan in i'm not it doesn't have to be any particular way around but the whole point is we can put a fan in drop it in and then we can get a fan above so that will be your 140 millimeter fans or your 120 millimeter fans Normal thickness uh, fans are 25 mil thick. They fit up here without any problem whatsoever. Um, but now, I think it's probably as good a time as any to start showing you uh, radiator uh, uh, configuration options that we can run uh, in the case. Okay then, so front radiator, and this is the one that everyone's gonna be pissing their pants about, is the 360 millimeter radiator support in the front. And this is epic, but it's also epic in a, it can also be a little bit complicated kind of way as well. So I'm gonna try and give you a little bit of a edumacation now. On the end of radiators, we have these large end sections, which are called end tanks. And these are where your barbs go. Now, a lot of the newer radiators, these end tanks have got quite big because of multiple flow chambers and all kinds of different mumbo jumbo. This is an alpha cool radiator and it is one of the ones with a large end tank but this size is not uncommon now 
The thing which is really the thing to notice here is we do have areas up here where you can put um, uh, stoppers, you can fit your barbs, just uh, blanks, but no matter what, you do need to fill these because there is just a thread underneath this. You have to put something in here. Now with this radiator, to uh, have it at the front and have it right the way up, it doesn't actually quite line up with the, um, the mounts at the front. Okay, so if you look up at this hole here, I'm just going to try and get it as close as I can, you can just about see a thread just starting to appear. Now that's without these end sections. These end sections are normally another two or three mil. So sadly, these are Alpha Cool, or at least the UT60, which is one that I'm using here, isn't going to fit. I have tried some other radiators and they do fit, but this was, these are the ones that I normally use. But one thing I am going to say here is if you're going to just buy components just because they fit with the case, then you're probably, you're not going to be, what I would personally do, this is probably the easiest way to put it, is I would buy the water cooling kit that you want. And if you want a 360 mil radiator in the front, maybe think about not running a drive bay uh, reservoir, just so that you know, no matter what you buy, you can whiz the drive bays out from the inside and this will fit. Because the, the mount is there, it will fit, it's just the end tank of the radiator causing it. Now some radiators, maybe another two or three mil smaller at the top, but you're not going to have all those other options and stuff on them. There's now a lot of people saying turn it the other way around. It doesn't fit at all if you turn it the other way around. Now, like I said, I'm being very specific about this Alpha Cool Rad because it's the one that I generally use for all of the reviews. It's why they're here. It's also why it looks brand new. It's because it is. It's never actually had water in it. This is just one that I use for the, the reviews. So this one sadly won't fit without a little bit of modification. But let's face it, if you go into the effort of putting water cooling in your rig anyway, you should be planning these things and uh, having to, let's say, you know, um, whiz out certain things or break your Dremel out or something like that. That's what a project is all about. So this, it, it, with this specific radiator, it would take a little bit of effort to fit it. But I'd also go as far as to say it would be worth the fucking effort to fit it as well. Um, so that's just that very specific rad. Obviously we would have this on the, uh, you can have the fans on the outside and then it's all bolted all in together as well. We need to go back into the inside so I don't want to make it about uh, an alpha cooling fitting guide. It's obviously a Corsair 780T review. Okay then peeps. So yes, I am holding the radiator in but that's because I'm not going to screw every single one in. But this is a 60 mil thick as I said set of fans, the other fans go on the outside, so that means we've got a double thickness radiator available to go and push-pull, and we've not even got to the end of the uh, hard drive area here that you can see, you know, the solid state drive area. Obviously your motherboard and your graphics cards are gonna come to about where the grommets are, so then that would leave you ample room there if you wanted to stick a stand-up tube reservoir or something, like similar to what I use in Orca. Um, so that's all available for you with that. But if you did want to go a little bit thicker, right then, so that, my dear boys, is an 80 mil thick radiator. So that is what we would call a monster rad. Yes, it's a white one, it's just one again. It's my monster rad that I use in the reviews. So we've got a monster rad, uh, the fans will be on the outside blowing through and again we've still got uh, plenty of room for solid state drives and the like there it's why I've got the camera so you can see that there's a good amount of room there and if you want to get all complicated about it we can say that we've got probably about 40 millimeters of room there so technically you can get a uh, um, 80 mil thick radiator in the front in push pull and it won't even be affecting the actual main section here just don't forget, if you're going to start messing around with this type of thing, then you are going to need to consider um, uh, where you're going to put your reservoir and stuff as well. You know, because this is extremely tight in here. It's actually being held up by the drive cages and it's not properly bolted in the front. It would need a little bit of uh, tweaking if we wanted to get it all fitted. Now there are mounts in the floor for uh, 240 millimeter radiators or 220 millimeter fans, whichever way you would like to think about it. But I just wanted to show you with the white rad in the bottom, as you can see, if you've got a 360 mil rad in the bottom, no matter what size, you're not going to be able to get two lots of radiators in. 
Um, so if you want a uh, 360 in the front, that means you can't have a rad in the floor. Uh, if you do want to put a rad in the floor, you don't necessarily have to worry about um, your uh, power supply cables and everything. There's a really lovely gap here. But if you do have your 240 in the floor, obviously you can run a 60mm thick or an 80mm thick in push pull and everything if you want. It will be going through the dust filters as well. It completely depends on which way you want your airflow coming in. I personally would probably favour going with a 360 in the front pulling in. Don't worry about your, because a lot of people start panicking about it, bringing hot air in and stuff like that. There are ways around it where if you have a top radiator as well, you have it go through that. So the first, most of the hot air goes out and then, but yeah, don't, don't overthink it too much because that's where you end up ruining your rig. I personally, and like I said, I've made quite a few rigs. Orca's one of them. I have a nice big radiator in the front and another one in the roof. Talking about having a radiator in the roof. So talking about having a radiator in the roof. Here is our 80mm thick in the roof. We know that we can get uh, fans on the outside. Yes, this hand is holding it in place. Um, but it means that we can have uh, an 80mm thick in the roof with a single set of fans, and we still have got a good 5mm clearance between where the top of the motherboard will be. That's actually nice and tidy, because it'll mean we can get our 8-pin out and we won't have any squeezy problems or anything like that. But, because there is so much room, here is our 60mm thick radiator again. Again, there's room above the motherboard tray for this. This is a, a set of fans on the inside, which would mean we can run a set of fans on the outside as well. So you can get a UT60, or sorry, a, a 60mm thick radiator in the roof, uh, and it will still fit above the motherboard tray. Something to be very, very careful about with this though, with this and the 80mm thick, if you're going to be running a radiator in the roof, it's going to near enough make putting a drive bay radiator, um, in, it's going to make that nigh on impossible. So if you're going to be, uh, if you're going to look at running drill rads or more specifically you want a radiator in the roof, I would look at tube reservoirs and other reservoir options and don't go down the bay reservoir route because uh, there will be uh, certain ones that you may be able to get them in and around but it'll be pretty much hit and miss it would be you'd almost need to be able to go through like i would be able to do and just kind of try loads of different ones and see which ones works but obviously you at home you're not going to be able to do that and i obviously can't make a video about all the different options otherwise we'd have a two hour video just on flipping water cooling options and i know some of you are now getting excited about that but there are many many more people that would it would bore silly so what we're just going to say is if you want a radiator in the roof then it's going to make things uh, difficult, if not impossible, for you to be able to fit a uh, drive bay resin there. So, just to recap, you can have an 80mm thick radiator in the roof with a, the, the fans outside, you can have a 60mm thick radiator in the roof, um, and you can have a push-pull, so fans inside and outside. Same on the front. If you want to run a 360mm radiator in the front, you can't run the radiator in the floor. If you do want to run a um, radiators in the floor, it's 240mm only, but you can go for broke as far as sizes are concerned. If you did want to mix it up even more, you could have a 240mm in the front, a 240mm in the floor, a 240mm in the roof. You could run your bay reservoir and you'd technically have, um, be able to do push-pull on a lot of them. If you went 60s, although they do do monster ones as well, just to make things even more complicated. As far as this is concerned, is with water cooling options, the world is your lobster. Yes, I did mean lobster and not oyster, because it's it's a lot bigger than an oyster. Um, so the world is your lobster. You're just going to have to uh, go careful with that drive bay side of things. But I'm actually busting a nut now. I really want to get some hardware in this, so that we can get a feel for it. Right then, on to the conclusion. And uh, I did want to say, we did have plans to have a water-cooled system in this for uh, NDA, but obviously with all the X99 stuff and all the other videos and stuff, and I have just had the weekend off, you know, heaven forbid I had a couple of days off, but I have just run out of time and I couldn't, I could have had it done, but it would have been proper last minute, and I want to spend a little bit of time on it, making sure that it's all uh, done properly. But you will be seeing the, um, Asus Ares review done with the Rampage Extreme and the 5960X all hardlined as well and I'm going to be putting it in the 780T for that. Um, 
Only problem with us doing that is I also then have to test it on the Rampage 4 Extreme, but anyway, that's going completely off topic. So, awards wise, it's 100% got a gold, and I'm still uh, in two minds about the TTL White Gold Award, and um, I'll, uh, uh, and it's very difficult for me to explain why. I don't I don't want to give it the TTL White Gold Award um, and then people go, the only reason why you give it to it is because you're going to use it. And that's because I am. Um, I actually like this case so much, this will be the basis for Orca V2. Um, and I have to admit, when I first saw the drawings for this, which were a long time ago, and when I did see the drawings for it, they were in about 12 different colours as well. And by that I mean there was going to be many more colours than we had, so I'm hoping that they kind of may release a couple of like special editions or something. Because um, I personally don't like the yellow one that did, because you can get a black one, a white one and a yellow one. I personally think it should have been um, black, white and then red. But anyway, so uh, price for the white and the yellow one is going to be £144.99. Uh, and then the uh, black one, I think that one comes in at about £130, something like that, £135. So you have to pay a little bit more for yellow and white. Um, obviously, I like the white ones anyway. Like I said, yellow, mm, it's, do you know what I mean? We'll have to see how it goes. The market could, you know, absolutely lap it up. I would have just personally preferred to have seen red. Uh, but as for um, the case itself, there's loads of room in there. There's an absolute acre of room above the motherboard tray to be able to get a monster rad up there with the fans outside is just awesome push pull up there lovely the front radiator mount it, it it's brilliant that we can get a 360 in the front is ever so slightly limited with the alpha cool radiators i have tried some other radiators that i've got here and some of the other brands do fit fine but there's um Basically, where the hard drive mounts are in the front, you can fit an additional one in the top, should you wish. You have to buy it, it's like a cost option. And literally what's stopping the Alpha Cool radiator fit is the little, two little bumps that stick out so that you can slide the other um, hard drive cage in. If they weren't there, that would give you the room that you needed to fit it in. So there is room in the front, um, but let's put it this way if you're going to be going to those kind of levels to put rads and stuff in breaking your dremel out and you know or even taking that front out it's a 10 15 minute job you don't need to be uh, uh an engineer with a degree to be able to do it and to be from my own personal point of view sometimes get into your rig and customize and things like that can be you know part of the joy and the fun of, um uh, with your system um so don't take what I said earlier on as the alpha cool doesn't fit. Uh, it may not fit straight away in there, but there's no reason why if you're not a lazy mofo, you couldn't make it fit. So, and it honestly is, there's like two or three millimeters in it, which is actually the size of those bumps, which was the point I was trying to get at. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say, if you're gonna run a top rad, I would go with the safety side of it and not run a front bay reservoir, just to kind of keep things nice and simple. And if you do want to run a bottom rad and a front rad, you'll have to use two uh, 240s because you won't be able to put a 360 in the front and then get a 240 in the bottom at all. So just keep those kind of there. And as I said earlier on, if you want a front radiator, uh, sorry, a front radiator, if you want a front bay res and you want as many radiators as possible, front bay res, 240 rad, 240 rad, 240 rad, that's going to be your premium layout and be able to get away with nice thick radiators and stuff all over the place. Just to kind of put those ideas out there. I would personally have two 360s and I will have two 360s going in mine. But anyway, so we've got, uh, we've got that, we've done that. It, massive graphics cards. Um, the cabling at the bottom, my only real niggle with the case is that uh, as the angle comes up, there is a, literally a flat piece of metal. And when you try and poke cables out there and stuff, it does keep catching. Um, and it, it's the, the cables, when they go up there, they're not gonna get pinched by that, uh, the right angle that's up there. And it's not particularly sharp. It just doesn't seem to follow the, the really well thought out and well built nature of the rest of the case. I don't think it would have taken too much to have kind of rolled that edge over. And that is me being absolutely stupendously picky. Um, but that's, you know, what I think that I'm here for. 
I don't think many of the other companies, if any of them, would have done it either. But, do you know what I mean? I kind of, um, I put Corsair up on a pedestal because uh, they keep bettering and bettering and bettering themselves. So if I can find little niggly bits here and there, then um, it, it means that, you know, we've still got room to manoeuvre. But it is absolutely epic. The window is lovely, the angular design, it does feel really modern and crisp. It's kind of taken, and I never thought, like I said, when I first saw the design of this, I honestly didn't think I liked it. When I got it out the box, I still didn't like it. But the more it was here, the more it's grown on me and the more it, it has felt like, uh, like, like I mentioned earlier on, the, the modern looking and feeling cars. So there's an absolute, you, that you, you can put pretty much any high performance system in this. It's really not an expensive case as well. If we think back, to not that long ago, um, and it really isn't not that long ago, this has, uh, for 145 quid, this has got better water cooling support straight out the box without any modding than the Cosmos 2 did when they were releasing that at the 300, 350 pounds mark. So this is half the price, more water cooling options, and it can still fit all the hardware in that the other one could as well. It's, uh, it, honest to God, this thing, you know, as far as spec wise, if you want to build a rig, yeah, you have to pick a couple of bits carefully, but as far as radiators and stuff's concerned, it's just bosh, 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 you can get it in there. Um, I know we're, they're going to sell these hand over foot, um, so it kind of, it also makes me feel a little bit tense because now I need to, I'm going to be using one, I need to kind of um, uh, upgrade Orca, so I need to kind of put my little personal stamp on it as well, and I honestly don't know what I'm going to do. So um, that's all exciting stuff in the, in the future. So I think what we're going to do is I'm not going to give it the White Gold Award and that's for plain and only reason will be so that the trolls can't do it because they say, oh, well, that's just because he wanted to use it when they would have left it here anyway. But it's an absolutely epic case and I will go as far as to say because I hold the 600T in a very high regard. That was a brilliant case for its time and it kind of put... A lot of noses out of joint when it got released and I will say this is a worthy um, successor to it as well I think this is going to uh, have a prosperous career like that one did as well I think these are going to be around for quite a while I'm actually looking to see what um, uh, builds go into these uh, going forward and I like I said I can personally promise you that you're going to see me using these a fair bit too notice I said these and not this because there are plans afoot um, stay um, uh, till the end and you will get a little flash up maybe possibly I'm not going to make my mind up till I actually render the video but an undoubted um, gold award from me us uh, and yeah I'm looking forward to getting this little baby wet which is pretty much what I'm going to do is stop the video now and then I'm going to uh, carry on trying to get this water cooling in but for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with the epic Corsair 780T out. Ding! Ding dong, ding dong. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. <laughs>